create indifference curves, we have to ask ourselves, given these two types of goods, like Coca-Cola and generic cola, what type of goods do we have? We have three types of indifference curves. Indifference curves that are convex to the origin, and two special cases, where we have substitute goods and where we have complementary goods. If we can identify that a set of goods are complementary or substitute goods, we know exactly what their indifference curves look like. If the goods are neither substitutes nor complements, then we will have to draw the convex indifference curves by finding a starting point, then asking ourselves how many of one good are we willing to give up to get one more of the other good and still maintain that same level of satisfaction. But if we can identify that the goods are either substitutes or complements, then graphing the indifference curves is much simpler. For example, let's consider Coca-Cola and generic cola. The two goods are substitutes. Substitutes are goods that give us the same value. We don't care whether we're drinking Coca-Cola or generic cola because to us they taste the same. To construct the indifference curves for substitutes, we need a starting point. So for example, we could start at one Coca-Cola. If Coca-Cola and generic cola truly taste the same and give us the same value, then we are indifferent between which one we are drinking. We are just as happy drinking one Coca-Cola as we are drinking one generic cola. This is illustrated by putting these two points on the same indifference curve. An indifference curve represents the combinations of Coca-Cola and generic cola that give us the same value. Having two Coca-Colas is better than having one Coca-Cola. But since Coca-Cola and generic cola are perfect substitutes, we are just as happy having two Coca-Colas, two generic colas, or one of each. And so our second indifference curve runs from the point where we have two Coca-Colas, one of each, to where we have only two generic colas. Our third indifference curve will run from three Coca-Colas to three generic colas. And we can construct even more indifference curves. The indifference curves for perfect substitutes will be straight lines. Since indifference curves represent combinations of goods like Coca-Cola and generic cola that give us a certain value, there are an infinite number of indifference curves. So I've added some additional indifference curves. Higher indifference curves represent greater value to us. Lower indifference curves, lower value. Once we have our indifference curves, we can combine this with our budget line to find the optimal consumption point. That is, how many bottles of Coca-Cola and generic cola am I willing and able to buy? Suppose that I have $8 for a party, and Coca-Cola costs $2. If I spend all of my money on Coca-Cola, I can buy four bottles. And I denote this by putting a point here on the vertical axis at the number four. Generic cola costs a dollar. If I have eight dollars and I spend all of my money on generic cola, eight divided by one equals eight, I can afford eight generic colas. So I put a point on the horizontal axis at the number eight. My budget line represents the combinations of Coca-Cola and generic cola that I can afford. So to construct my budget line, I connect the two points that we have just labeled. On this line are now combinations of Coca-Cola and generic cola that I can afford if I spend all of my money. They range from spending all of my money on Coca-Cola to all of my money on generic cola. But I could also split the money between the two. To find the optimal consumption point, we want to maximize the benefits given our constraints. So while we could choose to buy four Coca-Colas or some combination of generic cola and Coca-Cola, what we find is that the point that represents where we are our happiest is where we are consuming 
only generic cola. That's because at this point, we are at the highest indifference curve we can reach on our budget line. Any other point, such as this point here, we don't use all of our income. And points like this one here, we could have combinations of Coca-Cola and generic cola that would make us happier. What we find with perfect substitutes is that the optimal consumption point will always occur on one of the axes. And this makes sense because if Coca-Cola and generic cola are truly the same to us, meaning we are completely indifferent between the two, we are going to purchase whichever one is cheaper and we're going to buy as many of that cheaper good as we can afford, which is illustrated by this point here where we are purchasing eight bottles of generic cola and zero bottles of Coca-Cola.